Hello guys and welcome to a new video here on my channel. Today's video is about a very important topic for me. Recycling. Recycling is mostly taking things apart and then melting the materials down. But if you are a chemist, there is another way. Chemical recycling. With this method we are taking the recycling molecule and converting it into another one. The molecule I want to recycle today is polystyrene, which is mainly used for styrofoam. I'm going to turn it into benzoic acid. Benzoic acid can be used as a preservative for food, a lot of different fragrances can be made from it, and it is also an important starting material for organic synthesis. I started by reducing the volume of some styrofoam shipping boxes that was left over from my unboxing video. This step was very important because nearly 99% of it is air. There are a few ways to do that. I could melt it down or compress it, but I decided to use the Norpalm way. This way consists out of dissolving the styrofoam in a solvent and creating an interesting slime that likes to stick to everything it touches and burns very long and very hot. It is always brightening up my day to work with a substance that was used for slowly and painfully killing thousands of people. When everything was dissolved, the substance was transferred to some aluminium foil where the acetone was evaporated off. After this I was left with a large chunk of polystyrene. Because this was too big for the next step, it was made smaller. For this I remembered an old wisdom my sensei once told me. Violence is never the answer, it is the question. And the answer is yes. <coughs> After the white styrofoam was beaten a little bit harder than black people were beaten by American police officers, the pieces were added to a self-made pyrolysis reactor. This is simply an airtight steel container a condenser can be attached to. A steel can can also be used. I attached a special distillation head and to that a condenser was added. I tried heating it with a gas burner at first, but this wasn't hot enough, so a metal melting burner was used instead. Bigger is not always better, but definitely when it's about fire. Now what and why are we doing this here? Polystyrene is not a simple molecule. It consists of a nearly never-ending chain that consists out of single links. I can split these links using heat. Theoretically, it should just form styrene. But a lot of side products appear, like you can see on this analysis of pyrolysis oil. After some time, a lot of pyrolysis liquid was obtained. This liquid I created here is basically very aromatic crude oil. It is mainly made out of aromatic compounds, with one position taking up aromatic compounds with two positions taken up and by aromatic compounds. I'm mainly interested in the first ones, but with a better separation method, also the second ones can be used, yielding a dicarboxylic acid. My method of separating the aromatic compounds with one position taken up from the other ones is by distillation. They have a boiling range from 60C to about 160C. The other ones have a boiling range from 140C to about 300C. So I will collect everything until 140C. Interestingly, the first distillate was collected at about 80C and then ris up 220C where the rest was collected. The temperature didn't go higher after this and I had to change my hot plate to a hotter one. With this the temperature is immediately 260C, so I stopped the distillation. 
they collected distillate, smelled strongly like burning styrofoam and maybe a little bit like toluene. It also had a very similar behavior to toluene in viscosity, burning behavior and density. This could mean that it mainly consists out of toluene, which is very likely because the boiling point of the stuff that came over was 10c over that of toluene. Now that I had this fraction of aromatic compounds with only one position taken up, I needed to convert it into benzoic acid. This was done by oxidizing the group attached to the benzene ring. Potassium permanganate was used as an oxidizer, but in a big industrial setting oxygen from air over a vanadium oxide catalyst could be used instead. The aromatic mixture was added into an aqueous potassium permanganate solution and then refluxed for two hours. When the reaction was finished, a brown-black precipitate was observed. This is manganese dioxide. It was filtered off and washed with water. The leftover organic layer was separated off and the aqueous layer was added to a beaker. To this hydrochloric acid was added. Directly after the addition, a white precipitate was observed. This is the water insoluble benzoic acid. The precipitate was filtered and dried. The oxidation was repeated one more time with a similar result and the product was combined with the first run. It was transferred into a storage container and labeled. Thank you all for watching. I hope you liked my attempt on chemically recycling plastic. Bye.